sponsored by Vahid Connected. Take the money available on the Google Play Store. Just download it. All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to your next Unity tutorial where we're going to program our menu title here, uh, get some things going. But the two concepts that we're going to work with um, on our menu programming is something called array and array cast hit. Now, just kind of help break down the process. Think of touching the screen if we're using iPad or iPhone. We're giving the phone some input. Uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to shoot a ray into the position of wherever we touch or if, we, if we're using a computer game wherever we click on the screen. We're going to shoot a ray into the computer and we're going to see if it hit any game objects or if it hit something within our scene. Now if it hits something, we're gonna, it's going to be a ray cast hit because that ray has came in contact with something. And then we can program from there. So we can say, did this ray hit the brick breaker object? If it did, open up the brick breaker scene. If the ray hit the temple run, open up that temple run scene. And also if it didn't hit anything, we aren't going to do anything. So those are the two concepts we're going to work with in the programming side is a ray and a ray cast hit. The other thing that's a little bit different is we've only added scripts to actual game objects, right? Uh, stuff that we can see. So what we'd have to do is add a script to the brick breaker object here and also the temple run object here. And, you know, that would be two different scripts. So what we're going to do instead is create an invisible game object that runs this whole menu screen, add some general scripts to it, and then we can check for both of these events uh, if they happened, all right? So let's go up to our game object here, create an empty and that just means it's invisible nothing has been attached to it and we're going to relabel this game object menu controller all right and we're also going to create a new script javascript and we're just going to label this as menu so let's double click this guy and open into mono uh, mono develop here and let's set up our variables so we're going to create some private variables meaning that the variables are only going to apply to this script itself and we're going to say var for a variable and we're going to label this variable as ray. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a colon and then we're going to type capital R as ray there. So all we're doing is we're creating a new variable and we're giving it the name ray. Now basically what's saying here with this colon ray is Unity already has an object called a ray. Like it has a lot of cool functions, like we can get the user input, turn that into a ray, we can check if that ray is hitting stuff. It has all this sweet stuff and that type of object is called a ray object, or they already have a class defined as ray. And we're just adding those functionalities to this object that we just gave a name to, which is ray. So all we're doing is we're giving a name to the variable and we're giving it a type. Like, my name is Travis and I'm type human here, for example, if there is a human class already defined. So we're just saying this is going to be a ray. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I should explain all the programming concepts within this tutorial series because it might go too slow. But uh, let's just say uh, for our next variable, this is going to be hit, and there's also another class within Unity called raycast hit. So that's all we're doing there, and we've set up our two variables. Now within our update method, we want to check for the user input. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an if statement and check if the mouse is down, if the mouse has been clicked at all. And we do that through the input class. So we're going to put input and we're going to say get mouse button down. And this is going to take some parameters within it here. Uh, it can be either 0, 1, or 2. 0 is going to be if the left button of the mouse was clicked. 1 will be the right button of the of the mouse and two would be the middle button so we're gonna do standard left click so zero position there and we're gonna say if that's true if the person has actually hit the left button of the mouse and it's been clicked we're gonna do whatever is within this if statement the first thing that we're gonna do is set up our ray because right now it doesn't really know what's up it knows it's the, of the type ray but we haven't really defined it so we're gonna say ray equals camera dot oops I'm sorry camera uh, we're going to say main, which is the main camera, and we're going to say dot uh, screen to point ray. And so all this is doing is converting a point on the screen from the camera's perspective into a ray uh, type object. And then we have to tell it what, what kind of mouse position or what kind of screen point we want to convert into a ray value. So again, we're going to refer to the input dot get, or I'm sorry, uh, mouse position. 
All right, so hopefully that made sense. All we're doing is we're getting the mouse position where the button has been clicked because we know it's been clicked within this if statement here, the left button has been clicked. And then we're getting that position and we're turning that screen point into a ray value. So we can actually use some of the ray methods within uh, you know, this type of ray. And then after we've set up our ray value, we're gonna check if that ray has hit anything. So we're gonna say if physics, referring to the physics class, ray cast, um, and we're just going to put in the variable ray that we just set up and we're also going to put in the variable hit. So all this is doing here is checking if our ray made a hit essentially with, with a game object. And then we're going to say another if statement if there was a hit, if that was true, we're going to go into the next if statement. If hit dot transform, which again is kind of the position of the hit, and we're going to say dot get the name of the object it essentially hit. And we're going to say if that's equal to, and that's a double equal sign, and then we're going to give it a string name, which is going to be our two objects here, Brick Breaker or Temple Run. Um, it's actually Brick Breaker option or Temple Run option here. So we're going to say if it was uh, Brick Breaker option. So, so all we're saying is if that transform hit name is actually Brick Breaker option, then we're going to do with whatever is within this if statement. And then we're just going to copy and paste this for if it hit the temple run. And we're going to change this value to be temple uh, run option. And now we know that we've either hit the temple run option game object or the brick breaker option game object. And lastly, all we have to do is change the scene that we're currently in. So we're going to refer to the application dot load scene, or I'm sorry, load level. And then within here, we just have to load the level we want to load. So we could say temple um, run scene, or actually I don't think we label it as scene. Let's check. Nope, just temple run. And now I'll load up that option. So let's save everything. Let's go back into Unity, and we're going to go down here and check if we have any errors. We actually do on line 25. It looks like it found something, so that's not cool. Let's go back to line 25 in our code and see if, uh, and it said it found this unexpected uh, extra bracket. And now looking over it, I see that I didn't put my open bracket here, so it thought that we had an extra bracket down here. So now when we save this, go back into Unity, it looks like uh, we got rid of all of our errors, and let's just save our project, and we will catch up in the next tutorial where we're actually going to test this out. So uh, let's just save the scene, and I'll catch you guys then, and have a good one.